Good morning, uh, good evening, everyone. So today we have a very special student with us, uh, Dr. Itika Garg, and she is special because very few IMGs actually try ophthalmology, and uh, she's been researching and and she's been gearing towards an ophthalmat. So uh, let's bring her in and uh, get her perspective. So welcome, Itika. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Kera, for the kind introduction and for having me here. Um, very, very grateful for your classes. And um, I would love to help or contribute to the future students in any way I can. Thank you. Thank you. So obviously, uh, you know, very, very uh, diff difficult specialty. Uh, but let's start with uh, your introduction. You know, where are you from and how has been the journey so far? Uh, yeah, sure. So my name is Itika Garg and I was actually born and raised in India. Uh, so that's where I did my medical school and residency also. So after finishing my residency, I got the opportunity to train, uh, to present my thesis, uh, doctoral thesis project uh, at Uretina, which was a conference in Europe. And that's where I got very uh, inspired to follow my passion for research. So uh, I let go of my fellowship and I actually joined as a comprehensive ophthalmologist for a couple of years to have some savings and I applied for uh, US research jobs in the meantime and uh, that's when like I made the big move to the US and I joined the imaging lab at NASA near uh, Harvard Medical School and uh, that was one key area of my interest. I've always been very interested in retina and diabetic retinopathy and that's what I really wanted to like uh, train in. I also got selected in the advanced statistics course, which is actually very competitive to get in. So that is something I did simultaneously while I was doing research. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So uh, let's take a step back. So after uh, your MBBS, you did a residency in India yeah. uh, and then you worked there for two years. Yes, okay. correct. Okay. Yeah. And, and then you applied for research positions in the U.S., now, when yes. did you take your USMLEs? I actually took my steps while I was working as a comprehensive ophthalmologist because I thought or I had heard from someone that if you have like your step scores on your CV, there are better chances to get a good research job at, at a good place. And it actually worked for me because in this interview at Harvard, they did ask me, you know, if you've taken your steps and what are your scores. And uh, although taking those USMLE steps after doing ophthalmology residency is really difficult because ophthalmology is like very different from medicine surgery, uh, but I managed to get good scores. And I think that helped me both in my application as well as getting a good, like a re good research job. So, okay. Uh, yeah. uh, and and then, uh, how long have you been working here in research in the US? So I actually joined just before the pandemic, like January 2020. So okay. two years from now, uh, two years back. Okay, and and then of course you are going in the match in in this season. So looking back at your your journey, uh, how did you prepare for you know, the match? Is it only research or what else have you been doing? Yeah, so for me, actually, uh, our starting point or my goal was not that I have to apply for match and everything was not dedicated towards my uh, USMLE match application. For me, this journey has been very organic and it has been changing over a period of time. So initially, my goal was just to learn research and to learn the skills required for research, whether it's like clinical manuscript writing or statistics. And hence, my initial efforts were directed towards going into a good place, have good mentors and you know, learn and be productive there and also like joining this extra course, which usually people don't do. So uh, then during this process of research, I really like uh, the system here and the opportunities available here for academic ophthalmology. And that's when I decided that I would want to stay back and, you know, repeat my residency and have an academic career. Uh, I'm primarily interested in retina, so academic career in retina. And uh, then I applied, for, I talked to my mentors and I expressed my interest and I applied for residency. Uh, so I think what helped me in retrospect now, uh, like having finished my interviews, I feel uh, like having good letters uh, and getting those good letters is a part of like being very productive and taking initiative in your job. Uh, like I, and I, I was, I've always been very passionate for teaching. I come from a family of teachers. Uh, so I used 
used to like take a lot of initiative and I've mentored around a dozen of undergraduates and medical students here at Harvard and along with residents and really help them uh, get their papers published. So all of this experience also helped me uh, in, you know, getting good letters and talking in interviews uh, and then good scores. I think that is very, very important for a competitive speciality, especially like ophthalmology. Uh, so, I mean, if uh, anything above 250 is good for internationals, but even above 240s uh, should be uh, okay. So, so you know, you spoke about uh, good letters and, and scores, uh, but before that, how important is actually U.S. research for ophthalmology? I think they just have like a couple of things to judge internationals on. One is US MLE scores and the other is like your productivity in research because everyone knows it's very difficult to publish a paper. Like by paper, I mean like a proper data set paper, not like review articles or case reports mm -hmm. or case series. So they, when, when they see, okay, if the person has good publications and has good scores, they're able to better like accept or consider them for an interview. So I think it's very important. Yeah. Okay. Now, how in, for an IMG without home country residency, uh, how difficult would it be for them to get a research job? Have you seen others get a research job? Because, you know, from what I understand now, research in US can lead to residency in ophthalmology, but getting a research job without a home country residency, how easy or difficult it is? I, I think it's uh, it's easy because uh, US has like a lot of opportunities in research and they're always looking for like very dedicated, passionate people who can come and help them and get projects done. Uh, so I definitely know a couple of uh, students here at NASA and here also who are uh, who have finished their med schools and have come here and are doing research. So I would not say it's very difficult, but to be uh, super productive during that job might be a little bit of challenge uh, because uh, they also do not have much exposure in ophthalmology during their medical school. So, uh, but I think I've seen a lot of uh, like uh, people here now and uh, there were definitely some IMGs uh, who were med students. Uh, I met along uh, during the interview trail and everything is possible. I think just have to work very hard uh, because even if you come as a trained ophthalmologist, the expectations are much high. So either way, the expectations will be high and you have to work hard and give in your best. So, uh, so I think it's it's doable, yeah. And and then in research, would you recommend these? I think you did that course. So some statistical course or course in clinical research just to supplement your, your skills. Yeah. yeah, like I would not say it's 100% mandatory. It depends on your interest. But taking initiative is very important. Uh, some labs do have access to statistician, but also to make your paper good and to understand what's happening. You know, taking that thing that like nobody is going to spoon feed you here you have to drive the projects you have to drive them to completion and you have to make sure it gets done so any like even watching sometimes if if the tests are simple statistical tests if it's a t test or if they're like simple basic tests you can also like watch uh, videos on youtube and get yourself trained but uh, any kind of like knowledge to even interact with statistician helps you get write a better paper because you can ask them more questions like oh what if we do like this or what if we do like that uh, but for me I, I did everything I used to do stats for all my projects I used to help other uh, students and residents also so any anything is okay I, I, I would not say there's like one set uh, path mm -hmm. uh, as long as you're taking initiative working hard and being productive in the lab uh, uh, mentors love that they, they just want somebody who's like self-driven and self-motivated and, and hardworking. Okay, so now let's switch gears to application and interview. So you did mention, you know, importance of letters, clinical research, uh, but what do you think, and you've been on this interview trail, what do you think additionally programs are looking for in ophthalmology, and what should IMGs do to differentiate themselves in this very competitive uh, field? So what, what, do, what do programs look for? So I am still awaiting my match results. Right. So I, I do not know what's the perfect like recipe. Uh, but I think the most important thing I learned during the interviews was that you should be confident, but humble. Like you, you cannot afford to be arrogant. They want somebody whom they can see working with, talking with. Uh, and then also somebody who is like calm in stressful conditions and who can, who is like, they might ask you some question which might put you off the guard, but 
you know, as you always say in your classes, like just take a breath. It's okay to stay silent, think your answer and then come give back a thoughtful answer. You can always say, oh, that's a good question. Uh, but they are basically doing this, I think, to check how how you would do if, you know, it's stressful or if it's uh, there's a complication in, while you're operating or anything like that. So so they want they want someone they can uh, the patients feel comfortable with and they feel comfortable with. And I think these classes really help you prepare the basic set of questions and present yourself in the best possible way uh, uh, in, in a good way. So I, I think I would recommend uh, everyone joining this RT course for uh, preparing themselves and giving putting their best foot forward. Well, thank you. Um, so I know we are awaiting the results and all, And uh, but uh, any additional tips for budding uh, students who may be interested in this highly competitive field? Yeah, I think for me, like in growing up in India, is like you're always taught not to tell what you've achieved and, uh, you know, or what, <laughs> yeah, like, you, you know, so for me, I think the biggest hurdle was to be comfortable telling my achievements yes. and uh, coming across as like confident, but humble. Uh, it's, it varies from different countries to countries. But for me, that was one of the big, uh, like, uh, to be okay telling that okay i designed this project or i innovated this or I, I i come from the best residency program in country or just these things didn't organically come to me before so working on that and uh, besides that i would just emphasize like being happy being nice to everyone here while you are here on your rotations research job uh, being always grateful for all the opportunities never criticizing your home country in any way uh anything anything in the past and like uh, that will help you all get good letters of support and uh, always like helping people around because everything like word travels and it's a very small community in ophthalmology. We just have like 115 programs or so if we eliminate some of the DO or the research programs. So it's a very, very like tight competitive, like there are only 500 uh, seats for ophthalmology and uh, every year we have 750 or so applicants applying. So it's it's definitely very competitive, but like, uh, just working hard and for me I when I came here I had no contacts here so I, if somebody has contacts so that could be really really helpful and then networking here I, uh, I I was here in the pandemic time so I did not get time to network so much but anyone in the future they should try and go to present in all conferences and meet people introduce themselves I tried to do it uh, in the later half and we had a couple of conferences uh, in person so networking should be very important and uh, good scores and publications, yeah. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and just like the same thing, the rotation. If 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 your research is basic research, then just take out some time to do like a month of away rotation or uh, even in the same hospital, if you go to a clinic and shadow someone there because they want to see how your bedside manners are. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Ithika, for this very great uh, tips, and uh, hopefully uh, it'll inspire a lot of IMGs to take this unconventional path that uh, you've <laughs> taken. So uh, good luck and uh, all the best to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for the wishes. Yeah.